What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to SVR 2006 on the PS2, playing it on that PC emulator. Yesterday didn't go so well. We failed to face JBL for Tori Wilson's contract, and then for some reason fought Michelle McCool on Velocity. I hope that today brings something better than that, but we're here, moving on. Earning your spot. I see what you did there. The dead man. Oh, yes! Sucka! Hey, Booker T. You got a minute? Aw, oh, man. If you hear because you think I had anything to do with taking out SmackDown General Manager, you're wasting your time, dog. Well, I just wanted to ask you a couple of quick questions about what happened to Theodore Long. You didn't say that. Tell me you didn't just say that. Look, Book, I'm only trying to... I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to accuse me of running down Tilo in the parking garage, right? I'm not accusing anyone of anything until I've got proof. But I've got to say, you seem a little defensive. I don't see no badge, so I got no idea why you think you got the right to play detective. It's a good question. I'm the five-time WCW champion. And I ain't answering no questions from some punk-ass fool who don't respect that. You want answers? You beat me in the ring tonight, and maybe you'll get some. Now can you dig that? Sucker! Sucker! All right. Fantastic. Booker T. Now hold on just a minute. You're telling me the tag team of Eddie Guerrero and Orlando Jordan beat The Undertaker and Charlie Haas and Orlando pinned Taker? Huh? Okay. What do you know? Here we go. And so... Booker T is a veteran superstar who commands a lot of respect in the SmackDown locker room. I gotta tell you, I don't think he'd appreciate being accused of taking out Teddy Long. I don't think he was actually accused of anything. There's more on the line in this match than just a decision. There's the matter of Booker T's pride, and maybe even some clue as to the identity of the person who ran down our general manager. I mean, I keep trying to tell you it was Rikishi. He has a history. Triple H hired him. Once again, he did it for The Rock and the people. Okay. And so I welcome you to Thursday. Another week has been survived. We made it in this endless 2020 that just keeps going with... Aw, oh, I missed a strike. All right, Booker. I'll give you one shot. I'll give you that, but you ain't gonna beat me. I hope. I hope. We'll see after yesterday's shenanigans. So, in Sagari to Booker T. So, we do have one kind of large news story for today. And it will shake the very foundation of what's happening on Raw and SmackDown because... Paul Heyman is no longer in charge of Monday Night Raw. Now, to recap, for those who missed what happened last year, they announced that, hey, we're going to have Paul Heyman run Raw. We're going to have Eric Bischoff run SmackDown. Bischoff didn't last very long. He was in catering and then just kind of was gone there within, what, a month and a half? Six weeks? Something like that? And so Bischoff was replaced by... Bruce Pritchard, a.k.a. Brother Love, a.k.a. Podcast Man, you know, all that good stuff, right? The ultimate yes man that will always be in Vince's head and give Vince what he wants, etc., etc., right? So that was the case on SmackDown, and that's been the case for a bit now, right? And you can see Paul Heyman's vision of Raw involves pushing new talent and having lar longer arching storylines as such, right? And the idea when that happened was to have it like 18 months to kind of, all right, we're going to build new talent. We're going to get some guys over. It's going to be a good time. Then the pandemic happened and the ratings continue to fall as they would during an unprecedented time here with a global freaking pandemic. Like that part is, look, man, you can't really plan for that. And that's, you deal with it best you can. So now, with Raw and SmackDown being filmed in the same place on mostly the same days at the same time, they have now consolidated the writing staff with Raw and SmackDown. 
which means Paul Heyman no longer in charge of Raw, and that Bruce Pritchard running both Raw and SmackDown. Is that going to be a good thing? Is that going to be a bad thing? And more importantly, are the guys that Paul Heyman wanted to push, which are, you know, fresh faces, new talent. He has the tights! He has the tights! Um, is that going to be the same guys, or are they going to push, you know, other guys, or what's going to be the end result there with what's happening on Raw? Because I kind of didn't mind Paul Heyman's vision for Raw in pushing guys like Umberto and Aleister Black and McIntyre and that kind of thing. Now, we know that at the end of the day, the bottom line, the bottom line, still goes through Vincent Kennedy McMahon. That's always going to be the case as long as Vince is still alive. He is the final say on what happens on any show under his purview, right? Although, I would imagine Vince does not give two single Fs about 205 Live and that kind of thing. But, you know, the big shows, Vince is still kind of the guy doing things, especially now with the XFL no longer being a thing. Vince can devote more of his time to wrestling and whatever that happens to entail. And fair enough, it's still Vince. And Vince going to do what Vince going to do. Uh, I'm not surprised by that, right? But the funniest part of this whole thing, right, is that they said, oh, reverse is they... S I hate you, Booker T. Can you dig that? I hate you. The funniest part is they said, oh, Paul Heyman uh, is going to step down from his role. Famous, sir. And he's going to focus more on his in-ring career. Which, first of all, he's not, he's not a wrestler, so what in-ring career? And second of all, Brock is sitting at home until there are crowds again. So Paul Heyman right now has no in-ring advocacy career because there's no Brock Lesnar. Unless Paul decides that he's going to manage somebody else and advocate for somebody else, there is no in-ring anything for Paul Heyman because that's just, he's Brock's boy. So that's all very baffling to me. But yes, a huge shakeup. Now, this, for the time being, makes some sense. Because you have Destiny! Because you have both Raw and SmackDown being filmed in the same spot at the same time, on the same day, or whatever, having your writing staffs be combined makes sense because everyone's in the same building. What happens when things go back to normal? Like, say, next year. What happens when Raw and SmackDown are both on the road in different cities every week? What happens then? Do you bring back Paul Heyman? Or do you get somebody else to run Raw at that point? I suppose we'll get there when we get there. But that is a very interesting conundrum. One! This. I miss this in wrestling. The three-hand thing. I miss the sleeper hold and the third hand shoots up and the face is alive. See, that's what I love in wrestling. It's so good. And, like, nobody does it anymore. It was just an instant spot. Well, granted, right now, without a crowd to react to it, it kind of makes no sense. But still, it's a great spot. And people should do that. It is a tried-and-true wrestling maneuver. And I love it. It's so good. And that got reversed. Of course it did. Booker T giving me the fight that John Cena gave me. He's just that good duh. Now, can I dig that, sucker? But all men will fall to the salt shaker if I can manage to hit it. If I can manage to hit it. So, let's see. With the drop, here we go. Store it. Now, book a man. He had come that salt shaker. Nope. He had come that salt... He reversed it. He reversed it. Booker T is just that good. You cannot argue with a Hall of Famer in Booker T. I'm pretty sure he's a two-time Hall of Famer, if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, so that is kind of the big, huge news happening at the moment with the Raw and SmackDown writing teams and Paul Heyman no longer being in charge of Monday Night Raw. And I'm not sure how that changes the business at this point, but we're going to find out pretty much immediately because we're going to get more Bruce Pritchard doing Bruce Pritchard things with Raw. Only a one count. Oh my god. I'm gonna I'm in for the long haul here apparently. What the hell, book? What the heel, book? Nope. Missed deducted. 
hit him. Reverse his... Okay, so there is other news here, right? There is other things to Backbreaker. Deal with. Number one being that there's some rumors on Evolve. And the double axe handle, or the flipper. Oh, now Booker T has his finish. Great, great. Gonna get that book end. Gonna get that spinner Rooney. Gonna get that scissor kick. Something is gonna happen here. Sorry, book. Sorry, book. Gonna get you and make sure you can't use it. Gonna make sure you can't use it. While I pin you and waste your time. One, two, and a two count. His head's in the red. What else do I have to do to book a T here? So yes, Evolve. The rumor is they are in dire financial straits and could be looking to sell their tape library and perhaps the entire freaking business to WWE. So that'll be interesting. Perhaps a proper feeder system here for new talent since NXT is the third brand and not really a training system anymore as it used to be. Now granted, obviously you're still into PC for stuff, but once you're on NXT, you're kind of on there. You're kind of on TV now. It's not really, alright, we're only on the network kind of, that kind of deal anymore. So, Bulldog. It's interesting. But also it's Friday, and Friday means SmackDown is tonight. They've already filmed it, like, a while ago. And I've heard that the IC title match is just an absolute barn burner. And I can't wait to see Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles going head to head for that IC title. I'm a hype for it. I've heard it's amazing from what people who were there had said. So yeah, give me that. Now, Booker, can you get hit by the salt shaker? A two, a point. Oh, well, yeah. And I got rope wrecked. And I got rope wrecked. Just immediate pinfall. He still... How is that a one count? He still got hit by a finishing move. Right? Rope break or nothing, he should be busted open now on that. He should be down for the count. I have forgotten how to drag guys in this game, so... Ah, uh, it's a mess, Book. It's a mess. Oh, the kick. The kick. How dare you, Booker T? How dare you? Both. I hate that you, you miss the grapples like that. It's really obnoxious. Booker T there. We're hitting almost that 10 minute mark. It is an absolute nonsense machine. Dropping him again. There. How? I hate you. His feet aren't under the ropes. It should be fine, Booker T. It should be fine. And yes, Monday will be Moveset Monday. Don't you worry. I don't know how to drag him. I really don't. This is gonna be a problem. The bear hug! Nah. Here we go, again! Again! Hitting that salt shaker on a bloody Booker T. And this happens because emulators, you know... What are you going to do? One, two, three. The grueling match is finally over. Perhaps I get some answers now from Booker T. Hey, just because the bell rang doesn't mean it's over, Cole. There's Man. a lot of pride on the line between these two superstars. Oh, no. The dead man is here. What the? Check it out. It's the Undertaker. Where'd the dead man come from? Wherever he wants. Wherever he wants. From Death Valley. Oh no. Tell me you didn't just do that. Choke slam that out. Undertaker just choke slam Booker T. Booker was exhausted from that match. I don't know if I've ever seen the Undertaker this focus on just. Just, just gonna, destroying someone. I've got to now. agree with you there, Taz, but what on earth did Booker T do to invite such a vicious attack from the Phenom, The Undertaker? We'll have to wait until next week to find out I'm done for this week. All right now, tomorrow is Perplexing Pixels, a man-eater. Uh, I'll have up my backlash predictions tomorrow. 
And then Sunday, I'll put out my moving vlog type beardness that I've been filming for the past, like, week and a half-ish. So look forward to that. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos right here. See you next time. And I'm out.